North Carolina is a key state in the 2020 election, and that is clear from how many candidates have or will visit our state before this election in November. Today, Michael Bloomberg was in town. Tomorrow, Senator Bernie Sanders will visit. Former Vice President Biden has also made a stop in North Carolina. Yeah, and four years ago, our state was a hot spot for candidates. If you remember, Donald Trump visited 23 times, and Hillary Clinton made 16 stops. So Dr. Hunter Bacot, a political science professor from UNCG, is here to talk more about this. Uh, Dr. Bacot, why do candidates make our state a priority? Because now it's a main state in the process, particularly in November. But for now, for the primaries, democratically, on well, Super Tuesday, about 65% about of the delegates are going to be decided. So that's a big number going to 2100, about 2000. Do you think, this, is this going to be the trend, though, in the future? It seems like, you know, we were always this pivotal battleground thing. Is that a thing that will stay with us from now on, or yes or no? Why? Yes, because we will probably replace Ohio with the number of electoral votes in the electoral college, this, this census. And hmm. so going forward out of 20, 2020 going forward, we will be a big player. Hmm. So you talk about moving forward. I mean, what kinds of things can our state expect heading into, you know, the November elections in your yeah. mind? A lot of fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy this. I love it. It's, these are my playoffs and Super Bowls in November. That's right. But one thing is obviously we have the, the convention coming to town mm -hmm. uh, to Charlotte. And that's going to be great. And it's going to be an interesting time to be here because North Carolina is typically a purple state, a toss-up state. So that might be the, the event that tips it over to the Republicans. Based on what you've seen, a lot of candidates coming to North Carolina, stumping here, campaigning here, does that actually help them win votes? It, it gives them coverage, and coverage translates into into notoriety, or, or, or I guess you're on the you're on the television, so you get exposure. So that helps right. them. It's, it's free advertising. Plus, if you're on the like Bloomberg is on the airwaves relentlessly, and so that just reinforces that for him. You know, I noticed that he wasn't a part of the debates. Yes, he's not been. He's got a, it's an unconventional campaign. Uh, it was tried by, I think, Giuliani back in the late 90s or early 2000s, and it failed. But now we're in a different era because the Internet and Facebook and Google and all those sites are so important in getting your message out. So Bloomberg might be able to take advantage of this. Plus, Super Tuesday in March 3rd, on March 3rd is making a real big change in how things are going, and he's putting all of his marbles there. How important will it be for a Democratic candidate to win North Carolina in the primary vote here? I don't think it's going to be important because it's part of that Super Tuesday and, and part of that Super Tuesday is there's California, Texas, and North Carolina in the top three. Uh, and that, like I said, takes up almost two-thirds of the delegates as far as mm -hmm. going to the convention. So what's going to happen, that's going to pretty much di dictate and will be part of that is whether the convention will be brokered or not. Interesting. Thank you for stopping by today. Well, I appreciate it. it. <laughs> it's always like to hear the inside stuff that we don't get all the time. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some.